Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Um, today I'm going to be doing a short how-to on how to wire up a really basic DC layout. Um, not DCC, uh, just DC analog, um, which is what my layout runs on. Um, I run two controllers, one for each track, because um, as you can see, if I move the HST out of the way, there's two tracks, that third track in the background is just another one coming off of here. Um, little branch line there. Um, and uh, why am I doing this? Because it uh, seems fairly obvious. Um, but this seems to be one of my most popular videos. Um, I did it a very long time ago, um, sort of years ago. <laughs> um, and it's always up there as one of my most popular videos. Um, I don't know why. Uh, but I'm going to show you it again anyway. Um, so here we go. Um, just a basic how to. Um, as I say, there's barely anything to it. So it starts under the layout. Um, so we'll come down here um, and it starts with transformers. Um, so mine are on an extension lead. Um, and you need to uh, basically turn these off uh, when you're not using the layout because it um, does. They do use power all the time. So you can see just ooh, where's my finger on the shot? There, massive finger now. Um, that plug there is where my extension lead is, and it comes right down under this slot. So I'm going to have to do some digging, and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so we're down by the side of the TV cabinet, that's this massive lump of wood. Um, and it's completely sandwiched away, because obviously you don't need to get to this very often. Um, so this is where all my boxes and Hornby stuff lives. Um, but, basically, we just have the two transformers. Now these are basic Hornby transformers, you can buy them uh, off their website, or virtually anywhere really. They come in all their stuff, sets and stuff. Um, so you really don't need anything special for this at all, it's just a basic 12 volt DC transformer. So they're both plugged in together, um, then they run off, um, I should point out there's one for each controller there. Um, if you're only having one controller, obviously you only need one. Um, and they're buried purely because you don't need to get to them very often and I don't have a lot of space. Um, but the wires come along here. Um, and then run up to the table. So they come up this table leg here and on to the layout. Now I've just built a basic little cutout here. Um, so there's a basic brick wall goes around which separates the scenery from this little area where the controllers are. Um, obviously that doesn't really matter for the whole wiring side of things but it is nice because it keeps the wires out the way of the scenery, like here that you can see it bends it out of the way. So it's a really basic cardboard wall covered in brick paper, um, but it does the job nicely um, and it contains everything that you keep around the controllers as well um, in this little space. So to the controllers we have the two cables from the transformers, uh, they come in and plug in here. Um, this is Ham Hambys? Um, Hornby's really basic DC controller again. Um, not the best choice. They don't give a nice steady acceleration or deceleration um, really nicely because um, there's sort of be nothing up to there and then suddenly accelerate when it gets to 2 o'clock um, and then it'll be roughly the same speed from 2 o'clock to like 4 o'clock. Um, so yeah, they're not brilliant but they are cheap and they're really nice if you're on a budget because obviously you can buy one of these, pick them up from virtually anywhere uh, really quickly um, and you can run trains until you get a nicer, better, bigger controller. So um, from here uh, there are two wires coming out of each controller. Um, you can see one here um, and the other one is in the same place on the other controller here um, and they come out um, and they are the wires that go to each track 
you want these to go under the baseboard really um, and this isn't the best example because it's a baseboard that's mounted on top of a table uh, rather than just being built uh, properly however you can um, obviously just hook it up you sort of tack it in here um, and it would lead along to where it has to go up which is over here um, on mine it's quite simply comes down um, ignore this controller that's for something different um, then just is sellotaped and comes along these beams um, before heading up for my inner track you can see it comes along here um, and because it's mounted on the table uh, we obviously can't go under the layout to the center we can only go under the layout around the edges um, like with the one I've just shown you so this one goes uh, over the inside of the tunnel um, and then runs along the inside of that embankment uh, which isn't great because obviously if I need to get to it I have to rip all the scenery up um, so this is where the out track which is the one that goes under the table that I just showed you a minute ago comes up and it comes into a again Hornby uh, basic Hornby DC power track I'll put the R numbers, which is Hornby's sort of registration code thing for each um, product that they do. I'll put that on um, uh, the screen for each of these, so for the transformer, the controller, you've just seen it. Um, so this is um, whatever it says on screen. I don't know it off by heart, obviously. Um, but the plug comes in to the power track. The power track is basically this, with this um, not very realistic, but nice enough thing on the side of the track. Um, if you're going for a more realistic approach, then it needs to come up through the baseboard, um, and it would then be soldered to the outside of each track, um, not the inside, because that will disrupt the flanges of the locos, um, and could potentially derail them, so the outside um, and you can obviously do dropper wires and stuff but I won't go into them right now because um, I'm just sticking to the extreme basics of DC here so yeah this is I'll take the string off that's holding the wire up this is the power track this is the end of the cable from the controller um, and it has a funny plug with two prongs uh, one is positive one is negative uh, you then plug that in there you hold down these two little button things um, and it just presses in like so uh, you pull them out and in theory it then the plug can't come out whilst these buttons are up but um, I'm not sure how good that mechanism actually is um, so I just hold it in with a bit of string this can be disguised by putting a little hut over it um, according to Hornby you can get special huts this isn't one of them uh, that will go over that and look like a line side hut um, and that is an okay sort of solution make it a bit more light you can see it um, but yeah it's not brilliant um, and they'll have cutouts on the side and stuff obviously for the wires um, so not brilliant but yeah that's probably the best way to do it um, and one day these power tracks might have huts over them that's basically what gets the um, current to the rails so then we have the positive uh, goes to one rail and the negative will go to the other rail the loco as we all know um, then picks up from the wheels it has contacts um, so it'll pick up from one contact one set of wheels on one side it'll pick up the positive go through the motor it'll go blah, 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 make the train move um, and then the negative will go back down through the other track um, and that is why it's so important to keep tracks clean um, so it's worth well worth investing in just for basics a track rubber um, and you can get plenty of other um, track cleaning fluids and stuff uh, which are a bit more expensive again um, but they do do a much better job than a track rubber um, and they all clean the track really nicely um, and make sure trains don't get stuck when trains usually do get stuck they'll sort of judder along and just get stuck like that on a point or something 
um, that's purely because uh, the electricity isn't getting all the way from one track to the other track so there's a bit of dirt on one of the tracks or on one of the contacts in the loco um, and that means that electricity can't it com can't complete the circuit um, so it obviously uh, won't work it'll just stop obviously when you push the loco along a little it completes the circuit again it moves it on from that bit of dirt um, and the loco will carry on on its travels. So I have the same basic power track over on the inner loop right back here. Uh, the reason these two are so far away um, is because the layout has funny, um, well it doesn't have funny at all but the only straights, um, power tracks are straights um, and the only uh, spare straight on the inner loop was over there because obviously we have a level crossing here, a point there and a point there um, and the curves are going out there um, so I could just about squeeze it in on the outer loop which was here but on the inner loop it had to go over there um, it's a bit of a pain because if it had been over here um, it wouldn't have had to go through scenery and could have come round um, but because it's over there, um, that was the only place I could get it, which was over there. Um, the cable, as I mentioned before, goes through that piece of scenery. So that is pretty much it. It is really basic to wire up a little DC layout like this, even with two tracks. Um, the only thing is, um, when you're changing points for crossovers and stuff, you do have to be a little bit careful not to short circuit it. So here is where it does get a little complicated. Um, when you're doing crossovers, uh, the electricity has to go between them. Um, so I'm just going to show you, try and um, explain what can go wrong here. Right, so um, we'll have the, we'll just say this track is positive. Um, so the positive will come uh, when this point is set to this direction. The positive will come up here um, and go through to here um, and it can then go on to this track now if this track has been running on the inner loop as negative that can cause problems and it can short circuit so what I like to do is when I'm going across um, on a crossover um, is I'll unplug this uh, little clip thing from the power track and that basically means it can't short circuit so I'll run the train across and then I'll plug it back in um, and that solves any of those problems. Um, this theory can be scaled up um, to the crossover over there because um, obviously you have positive and negative going all over the place over here um, but I won't go into that now um, because this is the basics of it down here um, these are just insole plug, insole frog points um, mouthful um, so yeah that's the one thing you need to be um, aware of with multiple tracks um, so yeah i'm really not going to go into anything complicated this is just going to be really basic uh, dc how to wire up a basic dc model railway um, and i hope if you needed any help with that i have helped you and you found this video on youtube um so Thanks for watching, check out my channel, please like, comment and subscribe, um, and I'll see you all again soon, so bye!